so let us come back and start with the last reaction of your chapter that is your reactions involving alkyl groups so this is your rcoh we have done all the reactions of <clears throat> this particular combination now i'm going to teach you <coughs> due to alkyl group now what is this reaction hvz reaction basically when you're writing such name reactions as i say first try to write the definition try to take the example and try to label the reactants and products now for first let me write the example and then it's easy <coughs> The most important uh, requirement for HPZ is you should require an acid with alpha hydrogen. With alpha hydrogen. This is the most important thing. So, I already said what is alpha hydrogen? A carboxylic acid group with, now this is your alpha hydrogen, right? Adjacent to your functional group, this is alpha hydrogen, this is alpha carbon. Now, what happens when you have your uh, acids with alpha hydrogen, when these are treated with your red phosphorus. Now, I am treating this with chlorine and I am going to treat it with red phosphorus. Right. What happens immediately, the alpha hydrogen, one chlorine replaces the alpha hydrogen at every step. So, this replacement goes on till all the hydrogens are replaced. So, first step what happens? Now, this is your Cl2, isn't it? I am going to write this as Cl and Cl. Every time one chlorine goes and takes a, that substitutes that hydrogen and one hydrogen comes out with this chlorine. What do I get in the step one? So one chlorine has gone inside, this becomes C <coughs> H2, your Cl and HCOH. What has come out? Always minus HCl. One HCl has come out. Now I'm going to further treat this with chlorine again and red phosphorus this is important red phosphorus is important now again this chlorine is going to replace this hydrogen this hydrogen is going to come out with this chlorine so again minus hcl what do i get i get h c c c l 2 c o h now still there is one alpha hydrogen i am going to again treat it with chlorine and chlorine in the presence of red phosphorus now what happens this chlorine is going and replacing this hydrogen and that hydrogen will come out with this chlorine and what do i get now all the hydrogens have gone c c l 3 c o h and h c l that's it. Now try to label this. This is your uh, HVZ reaction. Write, try to write the names. Now this is your acetic acid. This is monochloroacetic acid. This is your dichloroacetic <coughs> acid. This is your trichloro acetic acid that's it this is your reaction now <clears throat> these are also called as alpha halo acids okay let us write this please remember alpha halo acids now i'm going to write the definition what is the definition acids having alpha hydrogen alpha hydrogen when treated with when treated with chlorine in the presence of red phosphorus are going to yield are going to give or yield alpha halo acids alpha halo acid that means at the alpha position there is a halogen is called hvz reaction hvz reaction that's it. this is the hvz reaction simple i have given arrows if you don't listen if you feel this is confusing all the arrows removed hope you understand the concept simple take out one hydrogen and <clears throat> that comes out as hcl and send one cl inside one cl in one hcl out one cl in one hcl out that's it so this is all your arrows maybe yes Dichloroacetic acid, alpha halo acid. So, this is your HVZ reaction. All right. So, almost we are done with the chapter. I think 99.99% of the chapter is complete. I am left with the last topic, and after this, I will be doing the reasoning questions that is, your uh, identification questions and board questions. That is it with your chapter. Please practice the chapter properly. Very lengthy chapter, but important thing is the maximum weightage in organic chemistry is this chapter. I have covered every reaction of this which comes under your CBSC syllabus for your NCRT. <clears throat> Please practice it. As in men, you have time. 
uh, at a stretch of one week i try to complete this chapter now once these the once i'm done i'll be as i said both questions will follow this topic and after that i'll be starting with the next chapter after aldehydes and ketones so when i speak about the aryl or aromatic carboxylic acids now i picked up benzoic acid right now what is the speciality of this <coughs> your carboxylic acid group right is a highly deactivating group highly deactivating what does it do if i have to uh, perform certain reactions like nitration sulfonation electrophilic substitution reactions i have to use under drastic conditions only it's going to follow electrophilic substitution so because of this <coughs> coh uh, deactivating group it does not show friedel crafts reaction so friedel crafts reaction that is your alkylation and acylation is not shown by your coh most important thing deactivating it will not allow quickly not accept the incoming electrophile so let us write the electrophilic substitution reactions for this suppose if i speak about nitration in the exam if they give you a nitration that is nitrating mixture what is nitrating mixture concentrated hno3 plus h2so4 when they give you this particular thing right suppose if <coughs> if they give you sulfonation process one more electrophilic substitution sulfonation which occurs in the presence of sulfuric acid right and so3 if i am given halogenation so halogenation which halogen i am adding i am adding bromine now for that bromine what am i going to do i am going to take febr3 and add br to bromine now simple you are going to take your benzoic acid the the electrophile here is no2 plus so no2 plus at this position here <coughs> the, uh, the electrophile here is so3h this is a grade 11 question so so3h you will be getting your so3h here the electrophile here is bromine so you will be getting coh and bromine at this position now name this 3 nitro benzoic acid this is 3 benzene benzene sulfonic acid benzene sulfonic acid and last one 3 bromo ben benzoic acid that's it only these three important doesn't show free crafts alkylation acylation because of deactivating nature that's it